looks a little not right. I'd like to see it from another angle. Yeah. yeah. Let's get our stand-in in here if we don't mind. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us at Distributed 2022, where we're making space for human. I'm Jennifer Clark, and I'm the manager of our Miro Academy, and I'm excited to take you through a little session called My Day in Miro. Now, I've been at Miro for the last two years, but I've been a Miro user for a lot longer than that. And I thought it would be really fun to take you through a sample of what my personal workday looks like in Miro from the perspective of a program manager, a team leader, someone with a distributed team all across the world, and someone who works specifically on learning content and teach you some tips and tricks along the way. I think it could be really fun and I'm really excited to have you all join me. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. We'd love to learn your name, where you're from, and your answer to a little quick icebreaker. What is your favorite coffee or tea order? I always ask this question at the beginning of all of our sessions because I am always looking for good recommendations. So if you've got a quick tip about a really great coffee or tea drink that I could order next time I'm somewhere, please let me know. I'm so excited. All right, so let's talk about what we're going to cover today in our session. We're gonna talk about a few different ways that I like to use Miro as part of my typical day because I use Miro a lot. So we're gonna talk about how I use Miro for personal work management. How do I take all of the to-do list items and ideas like flying around in my brain and how do I use Miro to bring structure and clarity to that process? I also wanna to talk to you about how we can use Miro to work more closely with your teams and I'll show you a couple of ways that I'll do that with my team today including giving some feedback with a for a team member who's not here at the studio with me. She's in a totally different time zone, so how are we gonna make that work? And then I'll also show you on how I can record a presentation, uh, work out some kinks on some work that I'm doing so that I can look back at my own work and use Miro as a surface to like look deep more deeply into some edits I could make or adjustments I could make. And then finally, we'll wrap things up by sharing where you can learn more about how to use Miro. This may be just one of the steps in your learning journey when it comes to assimilating some really good practical tips on how to get really great and confident with Miro. So I'll show you where you can learn a little bit more on your journey to prompt even better success um, using the product end to end. All right, great. So I promised you that we would go through uh, my typical workday in Miro and we're gonna do just that. And I'll show you a little template that I've built privately and personally my own Miro board using a template that already exists in the template library. And let me know in the chat, do you spot it right now? Uh, what is the template that is already in the template library? And you can see how I've built something custom around it for my own purposes so that I can use this space, this private board just for me to help me think through my own to-do list, my own prioritization methods, and really bring clarity uh, to some of the, busy the busyness in my work schedule. So I, just to give you the hint, um, used the Eisenhower template right here that you can see from our template library as a great source to help me prioritize different elements throughout my day. And then I built a little bit of a structured thinking process around it to support me. So my process generally is that I like to generate the task and I just used simple rectangles to get this down here to help me remember. Um, I like to really think deeply about what is pressing in my mind, what do I need to do, what am I working on, what's really grabbing my attention, and get it out of my head and onto somewhere tangible, in this case, a mural board. Then what I like to do is I like to categorize that idea and add it to the proper lane. Like what area does it really fit best with? Then I like to do that prioritization, again, using our friend the Eisenhower matrix. I'll show you how to get that a little bit later. Then I usually add something to my calendar if I need to block off you know, a time to work on that thing or schedule a meeting or something. I like to make that my step. And then my really uh, favorite reminder is that at the end of the month when I'm done with all of those tasks, I have a reminder here for me to wipe the board clean and use it again as my standard template to help me work through that, through that work. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you, and you can see some of the you know, kind of existing tasks I already have on the board, is how I get things from my brain onto the board very quickly. 
you may have used a sticky note, go ahead and let us know in the chat if you've used sticky notes before. And also let us know, what's your favorite color? I am partial to pink myself. I find that I use our pink sticky note really, really frequently. Um, but I try to bring a lot of color into the space to make it a bit more fun. But something that some of you may not have tried before is bulk mode. Let us know if you've tried bulk mode before down in the comments. Um, but I like to use bulk mode. And when I click on it, you can see that it blanks out the entire board. It gives me a totally fresh working space where I can just zero in on what is the work that I'm trying to do? What are the ideas? Um, what are the tasks? And I'm not distracted by uh, who well, this other task or who's going to do it or what time should I do it in. I'm just focused here on brain dumping and getting everything out of my kind of active memory right now. So the cursor is blinking inside this little field here and I can select the colors that I like from my sticky note palette. We'll go with the darker pink this time. And all I have to do is start typing to get that idea onto the piece of paper. So one thing I'll tell you right now that is on my mind that I need to just get out of the way, no judgment, no editing, is I need to book a vet appointment for the cats. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> and as I hit enter, it creates a sticky note down below and it gets me to the next field so I can keep typing and the ideas can generate as fast as I can think and type them up. So let's get that one out of the way. I know I need to book a vet appointment for my cats. I also need to reply to that email about next month's event. I know I need to do that. Um, I think I also need to take some time to review next year's budget. Okay, that's really important. Um, and then I think something else I need to do, I need to record a presentation. Okay, that's on my list to do as well. And then the last thing is I need to do a bit of a review of some data. Okay. Okay, great. So now that I've got all of my ideas ready to go, I can either hit command or control enter or just click done right here in the space. And it will automatically add those as sticky notes onto the board. Really handy if you're brainstorming, get all those ideas um, directly on there, but also really handy when you want to take it a step further, which I'll show you right now. Now, some of these are work related, but this one isn't. <laughs> That's just a personal work, I a personal item that I need to just get out of my brain, but I need somewhere to put it. I need to do something with it to make this space really tidy. So I'm going to zoom out and show you that I've created a bit of a parking lot um, below my workspace so that I can park different items that are maybe interesting or came up during my flow, but not relevant for the organization of my work tasks right now. So I'm going to drag over that sticky for the vet appointment into my little personal spot. You guys can get a quick look at my personal to-do list, mail some gifts, touch up the paint, book a vet appointment. So it's really nice that I can just use the visual nature and the spatial nature of Miro's canvas to help me push and pull ideas from one spot to another. So here's the personal stuff, but center stage is the work business. So let's go back to that. All right, I've got those work tasks right here. And they are good prompts, but they're not exactly very all very actionable. So I can then take an additional step to break some of these down. And you can do that really quickly by selecting multiple of the same object at once and transforming them into something different all at the same time. So if you've never tried this before, I highly recommend it. Just click um, and drag across several objects. If they're all the same type of object, you can transform their style with one click. So I will go up here in the context menu to say switch type. You'll find it all the way to the left hand side. When I click on switch type, I can transform these humble sticky notes into a text box if I want or into a rectangle if I wish. But what I'd like to do is transform them into cards. Now cards allow me to add a lot more information, detail, due dates, assignees, etc. So I find that'll be really helpful for me um, as I add additional layer and break down these tasks further. So I'll click on the card feature right there. And as you can see, I immediately transformed them into something different. So what used to be stickies are now cards. Now let's pop one open and get that going. So if I know I need to review next year's budget, something I probably want to do is break down this task a little bit further. What am I trying to do with this? What is my goal here? Are there, is there any other information or links that I need to reference? So I'll want to review last year's budgets, maybe review last year's actuals or something like that, right? And then maybe I want to also like connect with the team. I'm just like breaking this out for myself. Now, the nice thing about cards is that you can add this layer of information in addition to some other things like 
For example, saying its status, if it's a to-do item, I can say that right there. I can also add a tag to this. Maybe I can say that this is related to um, the financial um, kind of part of my work. And so I can just indicate that there with a tag and add it just like so. Um, I can then also give it a due date, really handy um, if the date is important here. And let's go ahead and make that date uh, toward the end of the year. Let's say I'll go ahead and make sure that I do all of my reviews by early December, so I'm on time. Okay, great. So you just observed me adding a little bit more detail and fleshing out what used to be just an idea or a task or a sticky note into something a bit more tangible, a bit more concrete, with a little bit more visual information as well. So I'll exit out of that card and check it out. It looks a little bit different than some of my others, and it gives me a little bit more information quickly at a glance. So I love using cards to help me manage tasks in this way. It gives you a little bit more information too. Let me get a little bit bigger so we can kind of see that. Perfect. The next step is I, what I like to do is then sort them into my different topic areas because for my personal productivity method, I find it really helpful to identify focus days where I select maybe like a category if I can and really work um, that area of focus um, from top to finish. Um, that way I don't feel myself task, watching, ta task switching too much. Um, I find that a little bit, uh, bit more helpful. So I'll go ahead and sort these tasks into their relevant groupings. So that budget task went into the team section. I need to reply to that email about next month's event. That's related to some content. Okay, I need to review some data. That's gonna be a cross-functional item and I need to record a presentation that I'm gonna give to a customer. So, okay, now I've got everything organized and you can see that I just use some rounded rectangles combined with little text boxes to help me remember what this was for to organize each of these sections. So as I continue my structured brainstorm here, my structured thinking process to help me navigate through all of these items, I'll then you know, just take them and organize them in the Eisenhower matrix. And that helps me determine what's urgent and what's important and what's not. Really helpful tactic to make sure I'm focusing my time and energy on the most important things. So that client presentation that I added here, that's actually pretty important and urgent. I'm actually gonna tackle it today because it's due soon. Next year's budget is important, but less urgent. So let's go ahead and put that here too. And then let's do one more. I need to schedule a call with a designer contact. That's also pretty important, but I actually think someone on my team could really use that as a development opportunity and work on their connection skills and uh, interview skills. So I'm gonna add that one actually to the delegate section down here. So let's move over here on the board a little bit further. You can see now that I've given myself an additional push, just again, using a template and the visual nature of the canvas to help me better organize my time and bring some order um, to what was a bit of a chaotic mess inside my mind. If you'd like to use the Eisenhower template for this purpose, you can actually access it right now. Just go to the template library. It looks like these little squares and rectangles in the content menu. And then you can just type in the name Eisenhower in the search bar right here and it'll pull it up for you. And if you've never tried one of these templates before, just click preview. It gives you a sample of what it might look like on your board and then a description of what that template can do and some instructions as well if you're not familiar with that practice or that workshop or that exercise. One of my favorite tips uh, when I'm exploring new things, head to the template library first, get some inspiration and get the instructions so that you can uh, move forward with confidence. Okay, great. So now that I've shown you how I'm organizing all of my work for the day, let's go on to another task that I have to do. And that's to see some feedback from a teammate and leave them some of my input as they are working on a project for our team. And we're gonna head to another board owned by one of my teammates named Giovanni. You may have seen her in a webinar before if you've attended any of our webinars. And she's currently working on a new webinar, a totally new content that she'd like me to give some feedback on. You all are getting a little bit of an inside peek about the process of how this works. And she mentioned to me that before she went on her PTO that she'd like me to give some feedback. Now, what if I have questions? What if I need context? Joe thought of that before I got here. So let's go to her board. And I wanna show you that at first glance, and I know you, what, what you might be thinking, this is quite a complicated looking board. There's a lot of stuff on here. And I think that's very normal and natural. I just wanna reassure everyone that when you use Miro regularly for lots of different types of work, including 
initiative work, or creative work. Boards can evolve organically and spread out over the canvas, and with its infinite nature, it really makes it easy to include everything here. So just a quick tour, you can see that Joe's brought in the content that she's already working on above so she can reference it. All of her research and prototypes are in here too. And you know, I know she wants me to give her feedback on something here. This is what our last discussion was about, but I don't know exactly what she wants from me. The cool thing is that she used a new feature that we have called Talk Tracks, where she recorded herself going through the board and asking me specifically for feedback and narrating some of that context and some of that information that would probably take a long time to type out. She did so on video. It's gonna make it really easy for me. So I'm gonna open that up with you all. We're gonna watch it together. And I'm going to use that recording to guide me so that I can quickly give feedback and then move on with the rest of my day. So let's go over here to the facilitator menu. We're gonna open up that talk track. You can see Joe's made a few for me already. I'm gonna click play. And we're gonna hear from Joe directly. Hey Jen, I wanted to give you a quick status update on the revamped mural for the workshop leader webinar. So over the last few weeks, a lot has been accomplished. Really looks like it, yeah. Skill map and the creation of the course outline. There are a few things I wanted to get your feedback and thoughts on on the course outline, however. So I think it's really important. See Joe's cursor; it's really handy. That this webinar is going to be an advanced level webinar, and so I've listed the prerequisite mm -hmm. right at the top, which is earning the mural essentials badge. Interesting. I'm actually going to pause the recording right here. Just to show you again, I have a little menu right here, this little toolbar that allows me to see the length of the recording. And then I can pause Joe during her explanations. If I want to leave a comment or I don't want to miss that thought, I can pause her right there and then I can interact with the board in real time. So I'm actually going to leave a comment right here where she said, hey, I want to make a prerequisite happen for the Miro Essentials badge. I'm going to leave her some feedback and say like, hey, Joe, let's talk about like how that could be done. Um, and maybe we need to go back and forth on that one. So I'll just make a note for us to cover it in our next one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll just send her that comment ready to go. Now, after I send her that comment, I can then click play on the recording again and pick back up on what Joe would like me to leave some feedback on. I also have the three different sections listed out and highlighting the different features and skills that we'll cover. Very cool. Two things I want to get your feedback on though, however. If we take a look at the before section, we want to encourage users to gather inspiration from the Mirrorverse. Wondering if we should point users to a specific Mirrorverse template or keep things open-ended. Interesting. Okay, so she just asked me for some specific feedback on this section, on her outline. Should we look at a specific Mirrorverse template or should we keep it open-ended? I actually have a question for her. Um, I can say, um, great question on this section. I would actually love to hear what she thinks. Um, like, do you have a template in mind? You know, I'm really fond of the Monster Workshop by Nina Tor. If you've never explored it yet, I highly recommend. Great uh, icebreaker and introductory, um, you know, kind of session for your workshop. Helps people learn how to use Miro really effectively too. So I might want to add that too. Um, I love the, oops, Monster, whoops. Anybody ever type in front of others and always misspell everything? Uh, I love the Monster Workshop uh, by Nina Tor. Uh, let's think about maybe featuring that one. Okay, great. So I've left Joe my feedback there. Okay, let's pick back up. And then for the after section, I have a few different skills and features listed out here. I wanted your thoughts on if this would be enough to cover or if additional things should be added. Hmm. That's really interesting too. So she's asking, is there enough information here? And you know, I really like some of the features that she's calling out that we might cover in that section of our content. So I'll just say, um, looks great to me. Nice work, Joe. Great. So, so interesting how we're not in the same room. Um, Joe is out of office right now, and yet she was able to give me the context, direct me exactly where she needed my feedback, and then I was able to follow along with her, leave feedback directly onto the board, and then I can just exit out of that recording. And now I'm on with the rest of my day. So handy when you're trying to hand work back and forth between different time zones, different team members, different teams entirely. So I really encourage you all to check out Talk Tracks, really great resource for this back and forth work. And I'll show you a little bit more about how to use it when I get to the next board too. 
So really handy way that I frequently use Miro is I'll be coming in to other people's boards, like for my team, for example, or even other teams, leaving feedback, leaving suggestions, leaving ideas. So I just encourage you to like leverage some of these features. I also am really handy when I'm on other people's boards of using the comment tool, just as I did with Joe. It's a great place for me to leave targeted feedback on different sections of the board. So even if we want to browse around and kind of see what Joe's been working on, you can see that she's got a prototype right here of what the board might look like. And, you know, I'm not really fond of this font. So I know she didn't ask. <laughs> Classic manager, I'm just gonna leave feedback when not asked for it, right? So I'll just say like, hey, let's like think about um, like different like font options that we might try for this. So really lovely way for us to both do the work, share the work, and then give feedback on the work all in the same place. Really common feature of my days in Miro is looking at these boards and giving feedback for others, reviewing others' work. Um, so wanted to make sure you saw that as the stop along my day as we get, keep going. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you is a different board where I already have some pre-prepared content that I have been working on. Uh, you might find this familiar if you've checked out the Miroverse before, uh, looking for our some of our um, skill building uh, exercises inside the Miroverse. Um, but this one in particular focuses on building presentations in Miro, and it's really beautiful content that was created by Madison, someone on my team. And so what I want to do is, in my last step for today, is see if this could work as a client presentation where I could record myself giving this presentation and then share it with others so that they had the benefit of doing these exercises as you know solo, maybe just downloading the template and doing it on their own, or perhaps using it in a more kind of enriched way with a uh, bit of that recording that we talked about, uh, giving a little bit more depth to it so that they have a facilitator who's narrating them through the experience. I thought that would be a cool idea to try. And I wanted to show you that Miro is also great for just experimenting like this in this way. So I'm going to try to use and leverage the features of Miro to make this experience, this presentation that we've already created a little bit more interactive. Um, okay, great. So I'll just kind of zoom out a little bit and show you that she's already created a lot of really beautiful evocative frames where as we zoom in, there's places for people to practice. Uh, there's places for people to learn and watch like GIFs and tutorials and short videos that teaches them how to use those skills. Um, and then takes them through some like different options and different stuff like that. So I am curious if we can go ahead and look at that as a presentation, how might that look? Now, another quick question for you all in the chat. Have you ever tried doing presentations in Miro before? Have you ever tried to like maybe even import one from another source and place it here on the canvas and present directly from Miro? If you haven't yet, I really encourage it. I find that now I do pretty much all of my presentation building and featuring inside of Miro so that when I am either asynchronous and recording it for someone, or perhaps we're in a group and we're doing it live, we have an interactive surface to use um, so that when they're, we're going through the content and we're going through all of this material, we can leave feedback, have a brainstorm, make a quick tweak, add ideas without leaving uh, this single canvas. So first step is I'm going to go to uh, my little organization toolbar, the sidebar here on the lower left hand corner, and I'm going to pop it open to make sure that my slides are in order. And I'm going to just gently throw, scroll through and show you that when Miro sees frames on the board, it's going to treat them as slides in this case. And so they see it as different presentation slides that are in order um, based on how I've created them. And you know, if they were a little out of order, like say for example, um, they were a little bit kind of uh, not in order in terms of their position on the board, I can click Magic Organize to make sure that the structure on the board, you can see right here, matches the order of the presentation that you can see right here. You can always make tweaks if you like, but I love that button Magic Organize for that purpose. I'll go ahead and click play to show you what it's going to look like. Really big screen. Okay, I'm going to do so like this. All right, great. And then I can just use these directional arrows to kind of spin me through the presentation. I can also use the arrows on my keyboard as well to kind of take us through all of this different, um, this different content and all this, this present, this entire presentation. 
So really quite handy to be able to build these frames that people could use individually and intentionally that way, and then also build this entire presentation that people could use as well. So just click stop, kind of leave that space and zoom back out. And I think what I'd like to try is use that talk track feature, do a recording of this board so that I can see if I were to share that board recording with a customer, perhaps, would that be an effective or interesting way that they could interact with this content as well, have the benefit of someone facilitating them through it so that they could pause, stop, and then interact with it. So I'm gonna go again up to that facilitator toolbar. I'm gonna drop down, open the more apps feature and click on board recording. And if you haven't added a board recording yet, it'll let you know that you can. So we're gonna go ahead and add a talk track right now. It's gonna ask me for my video and audio input. And then when I start recording, I can uh, show the board and kind of take them through the content right now. We'll get a countdown, really helpful. Great, so you'll watch along with me. Hi there, thanks for clicking open this presentation. My name is Jennifer and I'm gonna take you through a couple of slides so that you can learn how to use this exercise on your own to build presentations in Miro. So it's gonna help you quickly and effectively build presentations that you can use with others. So how you're going to use this board is that you're going to navigate to each frame to learn about different Miro skills that will help you build a presentation effectively. You can also play videos and follow prompts to complete activities. And then you can click the arrow inside this box to help you move quickly from frame to frame if you wanna jump around to different spots as well. But I'm just gonna take you through it this way, okay? I'm gonna zoom down here. So the first topic that we're gonna cover is building and customizing presentations, which include all of these skills. So if you already have some of these or would like to develop others, this is where you should focus your attention. To build effective presentations in Miro, you need to know how to use frames, incorporate shapes, add and format text. You also need to crop images, be able to customize colors, and then select and filter multiple objects so that you can edit quickly and on the fly. Okay, great, I think that's a good sample. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my recording. And as you can see, Miro is kind of finalizing that recording so that it lives on the board itself. So now in the future, if I want to uh, send a link to this recording to someone else, they can see this presentation. Uh, it will allow them to have the experience as if they were there, right there alongside with me, following along this presentation with a live facilitator. So I would just copy that link, copy to my clipboard, and then send it out to anyone to get their feedback. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and head back to my work hub board and kind of scroll on down because we're nearly out of time. And I'm so sad to hear that because I just so enjoyed connecting with you all today and showing you a little bit more about how my day works in Miro from organizing tasks to giving feedback to my team to trying something new. I pretty much do all of it inside of Miro. And if you're looking to build your confidence in your skills and feel really good about using Miro, in more than maybe just a couple of ways that you're doing now or upgrade from uh, what you've been doing so far, head to the Miro Academy. This is a great place for you to continue your learning journey. So if you haven't yet, attend one of our webinars, take one of our courses, earn some of our badges, and just get connected with us because we'd love to help you learn more about how to operate the board, learn more about what, you're try what problems you're trying to solve and what you're trying to accomplish and give you some additional skills along the way. Our help center is a really great place too for you to check out with really great documentation about all the details you need, all of our features, any questions that you have, great place to get that support. Our community is where you can connect with like-minded Miro enthusiasts, um, especially all of the ones you see today, both um, managing distributed and part of distributed, such a great place for us to connect as a community and you'll find a lot of great resources and support there. And then of course, don't forget to explore our Miroverse. That's where you're gonna get access to all of those excellent templates that I talked to you about, including the one I just showed you about how to build presentations effectively inside of Miro. And if you want quick links to all of these, just head to the question mark in the bottom right-hand corner of any board. It'll pull up the Learning Center and you've got one click access to all of the things I just showed you. I wanna say thank you to all of you for joining me for the last little bit in learning more about how to use Miro. Uh, please enjoy the rest of the program today. I hope you enjoy all of the sessions. Let us know, what was your favorite tip or something that you learned today? Let us know in the chat because we'd love to hear and get your feedback. And with that, I just wanna say thanks again, and we hope to see you at our next one. Bye.